So let's talk about some of the problems that sequence assemblers run into. And as I've mentioned already, one of the problems is that sequences aren't random in the genome. And so we can't simply rely on the fact that we're going to see one eightma every 65 KB. And so if we see an eightma, it's really a rare thing. That's just not how biology works. The other problem that we have is that genomes are riddled with what we call repeat sequences. And a repeat sequence is a stretch of DNA where we have exactly the same DNA occurring, the same sequence occurring at two different locations on the genome. Repeat sequences can be very short, maybe like three bases or five bases, but unfortunately they can also be quite long. So for example, um, one of the, the repeats that often causes problems is a gene you may have heard of. It's called the 16S gene. In E. coli and salmonella, this is about 1.6 KB. And salmonella has, in fact, seven 16S genes. And to make matters worse, when you actually grow salmonella, it can switch its DNA around based on those locations. So repeats cause a big problem for genome assembly. Because if we have a 1.6 KB region that occurs twice, when we're sequencing it with little read technology like Illumina, short read technology, our reads are going to occur like this. And so as we do the sequencing, when we try and do the And so when we try and do the assembly, we can assemble the reads up to this region, and we get a contig. Now, because all the reads here and all the reads here are identical, we'll actually only get one contig that represents both of those. But when we look at our average coverage, remember our coverage is how many individual reads we have at a position, we're going to have 2x the coverage of these regions as we have of the rest of the genome. We'll get another contig here, and we'll get another contig here. So we'll typically end up with having four contigs, so three regular contigs plus a duplicate, like so. Now the tricky part is that if we have a couple of reads that span into the duplication, maybe on both ends like this, then the assembler has no way of knowing, let me label this, this is A, B, C, and D. So the assembler has no way of knowing if we start off on A and we go into the duplication, do we come out on B or do we come out on D? So one possibility is that we come out on B, and another possibility that the assembler can't separate is that A goes in and we come out in D. Similarly, we have the same problem um, with C, so we don't know when we go into the assembly whether we're supposed to come out on C and D or whether we're supposed to come out on C and B. So with short read technology, these repeats cause huge kinds of problems. Now, depending on exactly the genome, you're going to have more or less of the repeats. Depending on the genome, some of the repeats are going to be long. They're going to be 1.6 KB, maybe longer. But even if those repeats are just a couple of hundred bases, if the repeats are longer than or about the same size as our individual reads, we're still not going to be able to solve the assembly problem easily. Of course, we can add some biology in here. We can do some other experiments. We could design an experiment that says we know that the order of this genome is A, B, C, D. But we're looking for techniques that scale, that are computational, that just require us to do DNA sequencing 
and um, get the answer. And so, of course, with some of the newer technology that's come along, so the pack biotechnology, the nanopore technology especially, where we're getting 40, 50 kilobase reads as a routine output, we solve this problem of trying to understand repeats. And so the new technologies are a real bonus for us in trying to close genomes down to a single circle, something that we can't do with the shorter read technology.